Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines that you may have missed for April 16th, 2018, episode 46. Excuse me, episode 51. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. Today's show is titled, Replacing Politicians with AI-Powered Direct Democracy. On today's episode of Headlines, you may have missed AI Congress, More Punch with Nano for EVs, Backdoor Nirvana for Gov, DNA Edits for Cures, and more. You can get show notes at iState.tv slash H051, which is linked in the video description. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. A, an, a, an AI determined direct democracy. Cesar Hidalgo, the director at the Collective Learning Group, which is part of the MIT Media Lab, recently gave a TED Talk in which he proposed replacing politicians with AI that can figure out what people want issue by issue. Now, now this idea is absolutely a provocative issue. However, it doesn't go quite far enough. And if you guys watch our shows, you'll know that we had Donny uh, Gebert on. Uh, and we're actually, he's going to be on next week's Lozilla Mystery Theater with myself and Bodhi Agora to talk more about his idea of... Uh, a direct republic but his idea uses blockchain that allows individuals to vote with their money on funding what they support and what they don't support but the fact that people are seriously talking about this notion of an an automatic congress that's that's literally the phrase he used but that was actually I don't know if he, he knows what of of Donnie. I don't know, but Donnie, that's virtually what he called his thing. It was automatic Congress, and then it changed to direct republic, which I think is a better better title. Uh, uh, anyway, this guy, uh, the fact that he's doing this, that more people are talking about things like this, I, I think it bears paying attention to because, to me, it seems that more and more people are recognizing the inefficiency of the current political system if you will what they're really recognizing are are they're they're escaping the the powerful myth that somehow the coercive enterprise model in all its various forms is the only model that that can help humans govern interaction and that's that's not the case and so people are starting to explore that and and this guy Hidalgo he's He's, he's going down that path, but he's, he's not quite there. So this is from Fast Company. The issue, says Cesar Hidalgo, director of the Collective Learning, well, I already told you who he's from, during his talk at TED 28 in Vancouver, 2018 in Vancouver, is that democracy has, had, has a bad user interface. Yeah, um, it's a really bad interface, by the way, folks. The idea of a monopoly of uh, majority opinion ruling over everyone else. It kind of sucks. It's called mob rule for a reason. It's designed with a bad interface from the start. But hey, ne never mind. I don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. Some researchers have suggested replacing our current representative democracy with a direct democracy, a system in which every individual gets to vote on every issue. That's awful, by the way. That's terrible. This, however, is a cognitive bandwidth problem. No, it's a cognitive problem with using people's stolen money because voting is, is a lot easier to vote than it is to say, I'm going to give my money to something. That's why Donnie Gebert's our, uh, idea is better than yours because he's talking about putting your, literally, literally putting your money where your mouth is. Our, our, our senators and Congress people assess as many as nine bills each day. Uh, as many as, just imagine you live in a world in which a tiny group of people are getting together to write laws that, that the laws create 10 times, 20 times, 100 times more regulations than the actual laws 
uh, uh, actually produced. So the law is like a blueprint for the regulators to write a whole bunch of regulations that are always changing. But but never you mind that these guys are getting together. These tiny group of people are getting ready together to write these bills, nine bills a, a day in some instances, to dictate over the lives of 300 plus million people. If that doesn't seem psychotic to you, I don't know. Maybe you should you should you should see a doctor. Uh, Hidalgo in his talk suggests the solution to this issue, one powered by automation and artificial intelligence. What if, instead of bypassing politicians, we try to automate them? That might look something like this. Voters are connected to an individualized digital agent that would collect information on our needs, views, and politics via the data we feed into social platforms and search. Hey, that's great. That's cool. I really love it when the government has a tool that allows it to know all of the thoughts that I have. I think that's great. Oh, wait, that's Facebook. Uh, sorry. Uh, I don't know why I'm complaining. Uh, this, Hidalgo says, would essentially work as a political Spotify Algorithms are already very capable of recognizing patterns on our and our patent behaviors and preferences, and this digital agent would read our data in such a way that it would be able to directly vote on issues on our behalf. That's nice. So basically, what we'll end up having is a a digital a agent that will be our representative in the automated Congress. So Congress will be AI run. I love it. It's great. I I know it's scary as it's as scary as 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 all that, uh, but but still, it shows that people are thinking. What they're thinking about is, what do we need politicians for, dude? He he just hasn't quite got. He hasn't quite fully gotten out the door yet. But but it's still encouraging to me that that they're beginning to think outside of the coercive enterprise box. Not not entirely, but they're moving in the right direction. Nanotech company hones in on increasing battery energy density for EVs. Scylla Nanotechnologies, in partnership with BMV, is working on silicon-based anode materials that could increase the energy density of batteries for electric vehicles by 10 to 15%. The technology could help extend the range of electric vehicles, which thus far, uh, that's that's kind of been one of the major drawbacks to this type of vehicle over the conventional internal combustion vehicle. I know I, I think about EVs and I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, that's great. And then I see the range of some of these things and I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to have to face that because the thing about the EV is it's not like, okay, even if the range is a little shorter, it's not like you can fuel up real fast. The, that's another problem. But that, that's another issue altogether, being able to to recharge a lot faster than you can right now. So this is from technologyreview.com. Scylla nan Nanotechnologies emerged from stealth mode last month, partnering with BMW to, pu uh, uh, to put the company's silicon-based anode materials in at least some of the German automakers' electric vehicles by 2023. A BMW spokesman told the Wall Street Journal, the company expects that the deal will lead to a 10 to 15% increase in the amount of energy you can pack into a battery cell of a given volume. Scylla CEO, Jean uh, Berdachevsky, Oh, I nailed that last name. Dude, I nailed that last name. I'm proud of that. Gene Bertachevsky says the materials could eventually produce as much as 40% improvement. Now, I now I, I went with the 10 to 15%. But, yeah, 40% improvement is, is, is possible, according to him. So that's good news. See that, folks? There is good news out there. It's not all bad. But just when you thought it was great and you can come back into the water, boom. NSA wants backdoor access to all your private digital data. Hey, hey. <laughs> that's cool. They probably already have it. They just want to be able to have it out in the open. So let's let's just throw that uh, disclaimer out there. This is not me saying, oh, no, the NSA doesn't already have a backdoor that accesses all your private digital data. No, 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 they don't have that. The National Academy of Science is recommending that government be given backdoor encryption access to all tech as a way to secure everyone's safety and well-being. Yes, that's, that, that's the only thing I think they're doing it for. The police state champions known as the NAS apparently is afraid 
of individuals having the power to be anonymous. And we've, we've actually covered that uh, topic numerous times on this site. Anonymity is absolutely one of the two great threats to the continued preservation of the monopoly on power that coercive enterprises currently possess. They, they want to hold on to that. And the two things that are fundamentally challenging their ability to do that is anonymity and self-reliance. And self-reliance is greatly enhanced with the power to be anonymous. So this is from fee.org. The in February, the prestigious, uh, prestigious, no doubt, National Academy of Sciences prepared a framework for decision makers addressing a encryption. Their solution, you guessed it, exceptional access. Even though their report has slipped under the radar, NAS reports often carry a lot of weight in Congress. Blah blah blah. The NAS proposed practically. Uh, proposal practically accepts that the federal government should have backdoor minutes. access in some way to all encrypted information. But importantly, a key source for the NSAS report has cried foul. And that's right. That's the EFF. Yes. The Electronic Frontier Foundation. And they ain't having none of it is the foremost mainstream defender of the First Amendment online. They are concerned that they were dismissed by the NAS proposal, calling it, at best, at best, unhelpful. I got to remember that next time somebody's a total jerkenstein trying to advocate for a total police state takeover of every aspect of my life. I'm just going to say that they are, excuse me, sir, you are at best unhelpful. Yes, that's... That's unhelpful. That's that's what you are. You're unhelpful. Uh, now back to some, I don't know if I call this good news or mixed or what. I think it's kind of good, but I don't know. Could be kind of scary too. Europe lifts restrictions on modifying human DNA. The European Union has decided to lift some restrictions on genetically modified DNA allowing for research to go forward in the treatment of a blood disorder called, I'm going to have to be really careful when I pronounce this, beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia. I thought I was going to say a dirty word there. I don't know what dirty word I could have said, but I'm sure I could, I could have stumbled easily on that one. Scientists believe they can help patients by editing their DNA code. The edits would then prevent further genetic mutations of hemoglobin, curing the patient of the disorder. And this is from the Daily Mail. Humans will be genetically modified for the first time in Europe after regulators have gone, given the go-ahead to trial DNA, well, DNA editing. A destructive blood disorder known as that word that I said that I don't want to say again, reduces the production of hemoglobin, could be cured using this therapy. Hemoglobin carries the oxygen the body needs to its cells, and without sufficient amounts, those with the disease can be left with bone deformities, anemia, slow growth, fatigue, and shortness of breath. There you go. There's your PBS education moment of the day. But I don't have time to stay on this story any longer. i got to get to this next story, which is, uh, I think it's troubling. Greek troops fire shots at Turkish helicopter. Tensions in the Aegean Sea between Greece and the Turk Reich heated up last week when Greek troops fired warning shots at a Turkish helicopter that kept approaching the Greek islands. This is from the Telegraph UK. Greek soldiers fired warning shots at a Turkish helicopter after it approached a tiny Greek island in the eastern Aegean in a dangerous escalation of tensions between the regional rivals. The island of Vro which lies just a few miles off the Turkish coast, became the latest flashpoint between the neighbors after months of growing friction and national rhetoric. The incident, in which Greek soldiers reportedly fired tracer rounds towards the Turkish helicopter, happened late on last, last Monday night. After the shots were fired, the helicopter, which had buzzed the islands at a low altitude, left the area. The order to fire the warning shots to force the helicopters to move off came in the context of stepped-up surveillance and reaction measures adopted given the increase in tension with Turkey, a Greek military source told AFP. Uh, in other words, uh, the Greeks are, are sick of it. And they're like, dude, 
you know what? We're not going to put up with this crap anymore. Will SCOTUS expand state's power to tax the internet? <laughs> Yay. Hey, by the way, South Dakota, I just want to say in advance, no matter what the outcome of this, you suck. A major showdown is happening at SCOTUS that could dramatically affect how we do business online. Will the Supreme Court expand the power of states to extend their online tax collecting reach beyond their borders? If they decide in favor of South Dakota, Dakota that's just what will happen. And soon e-commerce will face the same type of taxation that exists in brick and mortar stores. And I and I know I know what your brick and mortar store owners are saying. Well, e-commerce has an unfair advantage over us because we're taxed and they're not. Hey, how about we lobby for there to be less victims of the state cores of the cores of enterprise and not more victims? So, so why don't we work on freeing you rather than enslaving others? That that seems like a better plan. So the the case is called South Dakota versus Wayfair Inc. I don't have time to go into the details, but you can go to the show notes and uh, get that information. And we'll get Five to the next minutes. story because that's what we do here. We're running out of time. U.S. Army to use drones that use AI to determine when to kill. Yay! The U.S. Army is ready to test AI-run drones that will be given the power of life and death, literally, over the targets the drone might encounter. I mean, <laughs> what could go wrong? I, it's a beautiful thing. I, 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 I welcome my robot overlords. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is from sciencealert.com. Uh, whereas current military drones are still controlled by people, this new technology will decide who to kill with almost no human involvement. One, once complete, the drones represent the ultimate militarization of AI and trigger vast legal and ethical implications for wider society. You're literally training AI to kill people. I'm just going to let that float out there. You know, that whole, what are the robot laws and all that? Throw that out the window. Let's just, you know, let's, let's have AI drones that can kill people. Yay. What could go wrong? I mean, really, this is foolproof. This is absolutely foolproof. This is, you know what? You know, it'd be a better plan if we just had course of enterprises cease and desist with the killing of, of people. Unless, unless people are actually doing something directly to harm others. Other than that, let's just get them out of that whole business altogether. That'd be great. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. But it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Except, well, today's kind of a bummer day. I gotta say, there's a there's a bummer stories today. It's it's. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> First show back in two weeks, and uh, it is what it is. Gov Union pressures Wells Fargo to block gun manufacturers. So I, I'll just uh, I wrote a whole article on this, and I believe that it will be picked up by Daily Daily Sheeple. Uh, and, 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 the, and the nuts and bolts of it is that there's a, a government uh, union for, for public teachers that is uh, putting the pressure. The American Federation of Teachers is telling Wells Fargo, you must choose between doing business with us, all the American teachers. They claim that they represent all American teachers, but they don't. Or um, doing business with the gun manufacturers. So they're literally using their government power uh, to try to shake down an entity because it's building tools of self-defense for individuals, and it's directly hurting, of course, the the uh, the working class people that they that they that they allege to represent, and they use fear porn and psychological terrorism against children by trying to convince them that there's some sort of horrible epidemic of violence that's going on that doesn't exist. You'll have to read the article, but it, but it will make your eyes bulge out. Here's some good news. Bacteria could be source of green energy. Scientists believe they can use a certain Two type minutes. of bacteria to harvest energy for human use. The bacteria is a microbe called the Shewanella onidensis. Onidensis. Boy, this is the show for weird names that I can't pronounce. Shewanella onidensis, and it may just be able to provide energy that humans can use to power their lives. The research is coming out of U.S. USC Dornsife and is being led by scientist Mo El Nagar. And uh, I'm going to get to the last story here because the last story is, is kind of important. It's probably the most important story of the day because it is your lows of the day. Boom. There it is. Dog like seven foot be sighted in Argentina. Now, though the claims are 
are largely unsubstantiated and highly sensationalized thanks to a grainy photo, which may or may not have been One photoshopped minute. as if the internet would do such a thing. We have conclusive evidence that humanoid dog beasts are roaming the streets of Santa Fe, Argentina, and attacking dogs. Literally attacking dogs. That's right. I said conclusive evidence, and I'm sticking with it. This is from the Daily Star. Up, 30 upstanding. seconds. Like, the unknown animal is said to roam the streets at night and is not shy of confrontation. According to local media reports in Santa Fe, Argentina, the creature has attacked two dogs. They say the large animal killed a German shepherd and pit bull before disappearing. It was later shared in a video on YouTube channel UFO Mania, where it has racked up Ten nearly 30,000 hits. And viewers were left equally as terrified, even speculating what it could be. One comment read, that is so earthing scary. And that's it. That's it. That's all I, I can do. Because one thing that has not changed in how I do this show is that 20 minutes, man. That 20 minutes is hard. That's a hard 20 minutes. When that 20 minutes goes done, when that little clock goes boop, boop, boom, it's over. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed if you would like to read more about the stories we covered today just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for april 16th 2018 or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the facebook live stream and the youtube video or or go to lystate.tv slash h051 and you can also find our audio podcast show on itunes and stitcher by searching for iState. And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show in which I fumbled around like a blithering idiot trying to get things working right. You missed that candy, that eye candy right there. You missed that. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Uh, you can uh, look for it right now. I am, I am, I am purple attired. I, am, uh, I have a purple background. So look for, for me what I look like here, but with a purple background. And uh, don't forget to join me tonight on Full Auto Show with Professor Rambo at 9 p.m. or thereabouts, Eastern Standard Time, on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. That page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled The Right to Bear Arms, or Are You a Citizen or Are You a Slave? As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.